Hello there everyone, it is Mitsu here and welcome back to a new video on my channel. So yes, you have read the title right, it's the second part of the awareness and decision making video. Well, if you didn't watch the first video, you are missing a lot really. Well you know, these comments will suggest the video for you. Nah? Okay, maybe this kid who got accepted in Chelsea will encourage you to watch it. Nah, for real though, jokes aside, seeing these likes and comments will encourage me to keep doing what I'm doing at the moment. So thanks a lot for the support in that video and now let's just get right into this one. So in the previous video I mainly concentrated on scanning the pitch, also known as shoulder checking. And at the end I gave you this quick quiz about the passing options. Today we will be concentrating on the off the ball movement and how to create more spaces on the pitch for you as well as for your teammates. And as you guys requested, I'll give you a mixed quiz in the end. You can see here that Gnabry is very far away from the ball. You can say that he is out of the play. He sees the space in front of him and starts sprinting towards it. As the attack progresses, he is now providing the best and the most dangerous passing opportunity. You will need to do a lot of these runs to be able to get one or two of them in sync and give your side an advantage from it. As you can see here, Havers did the same thing but didn't receive the ball at the end, although he was in a very good position. Here again, Tuliso isn't close from the ball, but he sees the space in front of him and starts his sprint. He slows down as the ball was moving backwards, but once his side got forward with it, he continues his run. This same concept can be done anywhere on the pitch. Once you see the space, try to be positioned correctly and wait for the pass. Concentrate on the space between the fullback and the center back as you can get many long passes behind the defensive line by exploiting these spaces. Try to have a bigger look at the game, expect passes and get involved even if you won't receive the ball. Here you can see how by moving forward, the space was created for another player as the defender was pulled out. Same thing here, notice how this was helpful in the counter attack, every player sprinting forward will be pulling another marker, so even when you don't get the ball, you create spaces for your teammates by pulling the defenders towards you. Always try to keep on providing passing options, you can see here Gandogan moving towards Aguero to receive the ball, and right after that, De Bruyne read the play and provided the passing option as well, so the attack progressed quickly and smoothly. Whenever you feel that you are being marked by several players, try moving out of position. This will create a lot of options if you were able to successfully get rid of your markers. Just keep in mind that you have to balance this, as it may be very useful but very dangerous if you left your position during the transition. Be proactive, expect the passes before they are played and provide the passing options for those upcoming passes. This will also help you defensively, as you can see here, De Bruyne noticed that Gandugan was moving out, so he covered his back as Rodri was out as well. As the ball owner, avoid playing negative or backward passes, and look for those passes between the lines. I've made a whole video comparing backward passes with forward passes. I've also discussed when you need to take the risk and when to play safe. The link of this video will be in the description. Have a look at this, Common here isn't really marked as he isn't in a dangerous position. He keeps the ball with him and moves forward with it to get the attention of the opposition's players. By doing so, he leaves his teammates unmarked. Same thing here, Sun keeps the ball with him and heads towards the goal, to end up being marked by 6 players creating huge spaces for his teammates. Now sometimes you would be asked to play the obvious pass and release the ball sooner. As long as you don't mess up what you are doing, you are fine. As you can see, Lucas was calling for a pass, but Ndumbele kept the ball and managed to pass the ball to Sun, who was in a better position and was able to score. You guys asked me to talk about the 1-2 passes, so basically you can benefit from playing them in many different ways. You can pull a defender out of his position to then use the space that you created behind him. You can use it to get rid of the attention by playing the first pass to a player who is in a better position to give yourself more space. You can perform it if you are playing the station role as a striker to get the ball back behind the opposition. You can use it as a fullback to create a lot of underlaps and overlaps opportunities.
You can also use it to get rid of your markers and move towards the space available. The thing about this is that you can play these passes in any area on the pitch as long as you have another teammate with you. You can also reuse it to take over multiple players. Now let's move to the quiz section of this video. So here Boateng has all these passing options, but which one is the best? You can see here that both center backs are busy marking players, while this player is performing around between them. Notice how his marker is asking for help as he is quite far from him. If you are in Madison's position, shall you shoot, pass or hold on to the ball? So as you can see, there are three players marking him. So they will probably block the ball if you shoot or intercept the ball if you keep it. Inacho is providing a very good passing option in the space between the fullback and the center back. Moving to one that's probably easier, if you are in Mbappe's position. Shall you drop down and ask for the ball, or will it be good if you run behind the defensive line? As you can see, the defensive line isn't in shape, as they aren't on a straight line. If you drop down, the attack would progress anyway, but providing the passing option behind the defensive line is the best thing to do in this situation. Which player should Lucas pass the ball to here? So basically, Sun and Bergwijn are the best passing options in this case, as they both got the most spaces, but Bergwijn got this space and inside the box, so this makes him a better option here. Keep in mind that passing the ball to Sun will always be counted as a good pass anyway in such case. Should Havertz here pass the ball directly to his teammate, as he already took his touch so it isn't a first touch pass anyway, or should he wait? So by waiting the second, as you can see, he pulled the defender towards him, and by that created more space for his teammate. If he passed it directly, he wouldn't be blamed, but the defender would be able to press his teammate. Verratti got all these passing options while building the attack. Which one is the best? Whenever you have an option between the lines, go for it. Getting the ball between the midfield and defensive line is always a huge progression to any attack. What should you do here? Pass the ball or keep it and wait? As you can see, Guedes was performing a run. By waiting for him to complete it, you were able to get four opposition players out of the play. If you are in Havertz's position here, what should you do to help progress the attack in any way? Again, we are talking about the space between the center back and the full back. Those quick turns and change of directions will allow you to get away from your marker, and there you can easily exploit the space if you get the ball. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this part that many of you were waiting for. Thanks for the support on the previous videos, I'll try to keep these videos coming and thanks for watching.